Assalam o Alaikum. Dear learners, in this short video, I am going to quickly go through the process of using timers and counters in the Open PLC editor. In another video, I have already explained that what timers and counters are and how you can use them in letter diagram in RS Logic software. But in Open PLC editor, the timer and counter appear in a somewhat different form and they should be used in a somewhat different manner. So let's start. I'm going to create a new project and for that I need an empty folder. So I'm going to label it as a test nine and select this folder as a new folder. Over here, I'm going to choose letter diagram. You can choose any other language as well. So this is the letter diagram and I've chosen it. Now for the purpose of a simple program, I need some variables. So I'm going to add, uh, let's suppose three variables. Maybe we won't use all of them, but for the safe side, I'm going to use three of them. So I'm going to name the first one as input A and its type would be Boolean. The second as input B and its type is once again going to be Boolean. And the last one as output and its type would be Boolean once again. One another variable that we should have over here is a time variable. I'll use that time variable in the program and we'll explain that why it is needed. So I'm going to add one time variable. We can name it as, for example, variable time and its type should be time. You can select it over here. So that's it. So now I need a power rail and for that we can have uh, two pins. So over here is our power rail and now on the other side I'm going to have another power rail but this time I'm going to use a right power rail with two pins. So here are the power rails. Now I need to add a variable input variable. So I'm going to use a normal input variable and it is going to be input A. I'm going to connect it with this thing and place it over here. Now the next thing is I need an output variable. So this is the output variable and I'm going to choose out over here. So like this I'm going to connect it over here. So what is going to happen is that when I'll click this or when I'll turn on this input A, a timer will start and it will time for, for example, uh, 10 seconds. And when its time will be completed, the output, this output would be turned on. So now I'm going to use a timer function block. You can get this block by going over here and click over here, then click somewhere in this workspace. And in the first, in the very first portion, that is the standard function blocks, you can drop it down. And over here, you can find T on timer and T off timer as well. So I'm just going to use T on timer and you can click on it and then select OK. So here is the timer. Now this timer has four pins. Let me explain that what these four pins are. This first one, which is the in pin, is a Boolean type pin that will require a Boolean input. And when that Boolean input is one, this timer will be enabled. Uh, that is, it will start timing. And when this pin will receive a zero, the timer will be off. So we can connect this input switch, which we have used over here as input A, right with this thing. So now whenever this switch would be on, it will give one to this input pin and the timer will start. Now for timer, we need a preset value that how much time this timer should time. And for that, we need to provide preset time at this pin which is labeled as PT. To provide preset time, we need to use a command or an instruction from structured text programming. And that can be done quite easily. You can right click over here or you can add a variable. I'm going to right click over here, add a variable like this. And then I'm going to write an expression over here. Instead of choosing any variable from this list, I'm going to write an expression over here. And to insert time, the expression would be t hash and the time which you want in milliseconds. For example, I want this timer to time for 10 seconds, then I have to enter 10,000 milliseconds. So this will do the job. You can click OK and now you have this block over here. You can attach this block with this PT terminal. And now when 
input A will go high, the timer will start timing and it will keep on timing until 10 seconds are over and after 10 seconds this Q terminal is going to go high. So if we attach output with this Q terminal, this output would be turned on after 10 seconds. Now this ET is the elapsed time. It will show you that how much time has elapsed at a particular moment. You can store this time in only time variable. That is why we need a time variable. So we have a time variable already over here. We can uh, right click over here, add a variable and we can have an output type time variable. So I can attach elapsed time to pin with this variable time and this time would be stored in this variable. You can omit this time variable altogether. Uh, the timer will still function quite well. So that's it. That's how timer on can be used in open PLC editor. Now how we can use counter over here. Let me add some other things over here so that we can use counter in the same ladder diagram. So as a first thing I need a counter. I'm going to click on this function block and then click somewhere over here. Once again, I'm going to expand the standard function blocks and you can see some counters over here. This is counter up, this is counter down and this one is counter up down. Right now I'm going to use counter up and it will be inserted like this. Now this counter has five terminals. The first terminal which is named as CU, it will receive the pulses that will be counted. So whenever a false to true transition will occur at this CU terminal, the counter will increment by one. And this R terminal is for the reset. So whenever you'll provide one at this terminal, at this R terminal, the counter will reset. This third terminal is the preset value that for how long you want this counter to count. So for example, if you want this counter to count up till five, then you can apply five over here. And on the other side, this Q is the output pin so whenever this counter has counted up till its preset value, this qubit is going to go high and you can attach any output on this terminal and that output will be turned on. This last terminal shows the current value. So it will be, for example, if this counter is used to count up till 10, then this current value would be one and then two and then three and until it goes up to 10. So in the same ladder diagram, I am going to use this counter as well. Let me adjust these things a bit. I, I can attach this CU pin with this input over here so that whenever I turn on this input A, the timer will start timing and the counter will increment its count by one. And I can attach another input. Let's suppose input B. Like this and I can use this input B to reset the counter. So whenever input B is going to go high, this counter will be reset. And for the preset value, I can once again use the same technique that I have used over here for preset time. I can add a variable and in the expression, I need only the count. For example, I'm going to enter five. So there is five that is going to be connected at this preset value. Now on the output side, I need some output variable, but right now I have only one output variable so let me add another one so it can be out one and its type would be boolean so i can use this output variable over here like this i am not going to connect this current value terminal anywhere so you can see that uh, this current value terminal will show the current counting but it won't be stored in any variable so that's it. This is our ladder diagram that will uh, implement timer and counter as well. So let me run this PLC. Okay, so now the PLC is running. So uh, now I'm going to go into the debug instance. And over here, now you can see that right now the elapsed time is T hash zero, which means zero minutes uh, or zero milliseconds. And over here, current value of the counter is also zero and the power is coming up till this point and over here up till this point but it is not going any further so if i turn on this input a i can right click on it and click on force true so as soon as it will turn true you can see that the timer has started timing and it will keep on timing until 10 seconds and then this output would turn on so you can see that now the timer 
has counted up till 10 seconds and the output has turned on. On the contrary over here you can see that the current value of the counter is 1 because this input has transitioned from false to true one time. So if I turn this off the timer would be reset. So you can see the timer has gone to 0, the elapsed time has gone to 0 and over here the current value is still 1. Now I'm going to turn it on once again you will see that the counter will increment its count by 1. Uh, as the preset value is 5 I have to turn it off and on again for five times so that it can reach five and then we will see that this out one would be turned on as well so I'm going to turn it on and off a couple of times and now you can see that the current value is five and the output has turned on so right now the timer is timing after 10 seconds this output would also be on now if you want to reset this counter you can simply turn on this input and you will see that the counter has been reset and this output is turned off. So I hope that you have understood that how you can use timers and counters in open PLC editor and if you couldn't understand or grasp something I am always available through YouTube comments or email so you can contact me. Thank you and take care.